Hey, welcome back everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Today I'm going to talk about how to hook up an inverter to the boat. Now, the reason I did an inverter is because I wanted to do the air conditioner on the inverter. I'm not sure I would do that again. That was probably a mistake. I would probably just maybe do a DC air conditioner that hooks directly to the battery. I haven't decided on that yet. I can also hook an air conditioner up to the breaker box and just run it when I have shore power. So you have three options with air conditioners. You can hook it up to the shore power, you can hook it up to your inverter, and that probably uses a lot of energy because it uses the inverter also. And then they have some air conditioners that cost the most that hook directly to the battery. So there's a lot of options there. The reason I did the inverter was for that air conditioner. Now I'm not sure I'm gonna do that, but I already had an inverter, so I went ahead and hooked it all up. So I'll show you how I did it. And I'll still get use out of it. I can I got my surge strip and all that. So when I'm out on the boat, I can hook up my coffee maker and everything right to the inverter, and I'll have plenty of DC power when I need it. So let's go through some of this stuff and I'll show you what all I did. All right, so right down here on the bottom, this is where I put my battery bank. I did get the Dakota lithium battery. Everybody on YouTube seemed to use Battleborn. I guess they're sponsored a lot. I'm not sure, but so I decided to do something different and go with Dakota. And I had a call them once about charge levels and they were real helpful and real nice and told me how to do it all. So, um, so far that has been solid. And what I did is I put my battery with these little straps down here with these little stainless steel straps. This isn't gonna work, so don't do this. Don't copy me on this one. I'm gonna have to redo this. Probably get some kind of battery uh, bed to put it on. And because I'm getting more than one, I, I plan to do two or three, you know, eventually with solar and all that. So I wanna get two more batteries. So this whole compartment down here will be for that. And what I did is I drilled two big holes to my spot where my inverter's at. So I have these two holes that I drilled here to run all my big battery cables into. And down here is the fuse for the inverter. That's a 250 amp fuse for that. So let's go over here and I'll show you where the actual inverter is. So I put the inverter down here and it was quite a chore. I'll tell you right now because the inverter is so heavy and I still had to clean up all these wires guys so just bear with me but the inverter was really heavy and what happened was I had to hold it and mount it in this cabinet here and when I did uh, I put the bolts all the way through right here because it was it was so heavy that um so I put I put these bolts and they come all the way through and then I have the lock washers on them so the reason I did that is because it was so heavy that I was scared it wasn't it gonna hold with just a screw and so you can see I drilled me two holes here and I put the little cable wrap on it and I'll probably glue that down and um, get that done so so what all you have to have so you need to have let's get up here and see so you see the black cable coming on the far left side up here this one right here going across that's going to be a one aught cable and that's your chassis ground and what i did is i ran the one i showed you last time over here all my grounds over there in the corner to a, a post and a ground post so that's that chassis ground now this cable right here coming down that's your negative and i have it going into there and I have a binding post in there going directly to my battery. All right. Then also you have the positive and the positive goes to a switch. So I got to mark it, but this is going to be my inverter switch, my on and off switch. And then that goes to my battery. So you have to put the inverter on a switch. Now, don't forget you got the inverter. Let's uh, scroll in a little bit. So you got the inverter breaker over there also. So you gotta have a 30 amp breaker for that. All right, what I did is I put the GFCI outlet underneath the one that goes with the inverter. And I bought it and I have it run into a surge protector. And like I said, I'm gonna charge my things up underneath my seat over there so I can put my batteries and things like that for drones and cameras and things. And that's basically it. Uh, let me show you how to hook it up 
all right so it doesn't want to focus real good up close but we can do it here so you can see I got my green light for my battery that means everything's showing good so you have to go into a few settings here to to program for a lithium-ion battery it, um, it it charges depending on if you want you know uh, flooded or AGM so what you want to do is you want to hold down the OK button for five seconds that takes you into your programming and then you have all these questions and what you'll need to do is look in the book here and answer your questions the main ones you want to answer so if you hit the arrow up you see it's toggling me through my different questions here once you get to 20 there you go 20 so 20 is going to be a use is going to be a custom battery and that's where you would set if you had AGM flooded or lithium ion so I'm going to skip that one now 22 is where you want to set your absorption so that's what you, your charge rate what actually is well, I called Dakota lithium they told me to do 14.4 so if you want to change that hit OK and if you hit up it'll go to 14.5 if you hold up it'll go down one notch and then um, just hit OK and then you can go to the next question now 23 you got to set this one too this is going to be your actually your floating charge so they told me to do 13.6 as my floating charge so I'm just going and that's what you do you leave it there And if you need to set it. And then when you get done, you can just hit escape. And it'll take you back out. And you can see I got, I'm getting a rate of 13.3 volts coming out of my battery right now. And everything's working properly. Now I do have shore power hooked up. So let's see. on your shore power so now I can flip my inverter switch on cross your fingers nothing blows up all right and there it goes it cuts on all right the BUL that's gonna be like an equalization that it's doing right now because it's uh, converting over to shore power you can hear the fan cut on. That's one thing too. I'm going to have to have some kind of vent for this. So I might cut a little hole behind the seat with a little vent there. And if you come over here, like I said, you can see right here, I do have power. Now, what I can do is I can either maybe open that up and get rid of that so the air can come through. Or what I might do is back here, I can cut me a little metal uh, stainless steel um, or plastic you know a little air air grate there so some of the air in here can come out because you can hear it running in here and I'm sure it heats up when it's warming when it's warming up it's a uh, charging when it's doing all the charging so now you can see it switched over to ABS so that's uh, absorption so it's actually charging the battery right now so you can see the charge voltage at 14.4 and a couple more things just uh, just so you guys know so if you look in the manual you can see all the different uh, questions to look at in here if you want to change anything depending on your boat you know it might be different also you really need to look at this all right I'm trying to get to this to focus but you can see right here for the freedom 2000 which is what I'm using and we're using it in a boat which is different than a car or a van so it says minimum cable size, two alt cable. Okay, so that's pretty big. So that's what I have going to my, my actual inverter. Now the chassis is the one alt. And then right there it says maximum battery fuse 250 amps. So that's what I have, that 250 amp fuse. And then I got the two alt cable actually going to it. 
All right, that's it. It was a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. If I got it in there. I'm happy it's in there now. I'm not sure I would do it again. But if you guys want to do it or you need help, just comment down below. And as always, thanks for tuning in. I'll be sure to put the links down below of what all I use. Please like and subscribe. It'll really help my channel out. And on to the next project and on to the water soon we go. Thanks, guys.